now we're going to get to vocals because that's what most of you had questions about. So I'm going to throw this vocal track in that we actually recorded a couple hours ago. You see, Dad worked hard. Dad worked his ass off. Trying to give his son a clean bath cloth. So right now the vocals are dry. Dry just means they don't have any effects. So I got these vocals in here. Dad worked hard. Dad worked his ass off. And you can hear, at least I can hear, that the vocals are getting lost in the mix. They're not very prominent. And, you know, the point of a rap song, at least to a rapper, not to a producer, because I don't really even like rappers, is for people to hear what they've written. So if you're a rapper, uh, which I bet you are, then you're going to want your vocals to sound clear and powerful. Yo, Payne, put the auto-tune on my vocals. No. Yeah, yeah. The first step with vocals is to equalize them. If you have a good mic, this process may be a lot quicker. If you go to a studio, a professional studio, usually the engineer will have a good five, six, seven vocal mics just because he knows or she knows that different uh, voices have different frequency ranges. You know, different mics are more appropriate for different types of, of voices. I have a pretty good mic. It's a uh, AT4040, so it worked pretty well with this guy, AD's vocals. There are a couple things that um, it's a safe bet you should apply when processing and equalizing vocals. You can use the track EQ. If you want a more advanced EQ, you can use the paragraphic EQ or the parametric EQ. Both of them just come with Sony Acid Pro. Uh, one thing that you can do is cut bass frequencies. So up to around 100 hertz, you can cut a lot of these bass frequencies because they're going to end up muddling the vocals. The higher mid frequencies are the most audible frequencies and they're the frequencies at which our voices are being transmitted. So generally you want to boost frequencies somewhere around what two kilohertz or so it just kind of brightens up the vocals and makes them a little clearer a lot of the challenge behind mixing and engineering is training your ear to hear what really sounds good what sounds bad and what needs to get fixed so now that I've EQ'd my vocals dad worked hard dad worked his ass off I don't know if you can hear the difference but it's sounding a little clearer we have another problem too if you'll notice here we have all these peaks so you can see the the sound waves here are inconsistent I'm gonna zoom in and you can see that there's a huge peak here and a huge peak here um, and that's just because the rapper is getting louder at certain spots and quieter at other spots and uh, that complicates the mix it hurts your ears sometimes um, so we want to apply a compressor and the compression uh, we'll take the quieter parts, bring those up, and take the louder parts and bring those down. Basically, that's not that's not like the technical explanation, but uh, in a nutshell, that's what's being done. And that way, you end up with a more consistent sound. So it's not, you know, you're talking quietly, and then you get loud, and then you get quiet again. It evens everything out. Uh, so once again, we're going to use the Wave Hammer plugin. And there's a vocal preset. It's called voice. So now that I add that. Dad worked hard. Dad worked his ass off. Trying to give his son a clean bath cloth. The vocals sound crispier and crunchier and nuttier, creamier. I'm thinking about pie right now. They sound a little more consistent. Uh, you want to mess with the threshold a little. You can bring the threshold down. Basically the threshold is the point at which the compressor really starts squashing your vocals if they're too loud or too quiet. I have the threshold set to about negative 25 decibels and uh, the attack is set to 5. Uh, you probably want the ratio somewhere around 3 to 1 or maybe 4 to 1. You know, you use your own judgment. I don't know. Some people like more compression memory. You like hard compression. And hipsters like hard compression. Listen to MIA or, you know, all that hipster stuff. Dad worked hard. Dad worked his ass off. Trying to... Ooh. And now your vocals are way louder, too, so you're going to want to turn them down a little. So now we're going to hear what everything sounds like together. You see, Dad worked hard. Dad worked his ass off. Trying to give his son a clean bath cloth But somewhere I got mixed with some bad sauce Cause I started acting like a jack-off So uh, now the vocals are 
on top of the music, they're not buried behind it. You can also add a little reverb, but if you add reverb, be careful. Um, you want the reverb, you want, you want to keep the dry out at zero and like, keep the reverb really low. Dad worked hard, dad worked his ass off. Try I mean, somewhere around negative 50 decibels on the reverb out is a good place to start. Because if you turn it up, dad worked hard, dad worked his ass off. Uh, you can also add simple delay, which I will do every so often, um, just because it adds kind of a chorus effect to the vocals and thickens them up. So keep the dry out on your simple delay. Zero decibels, uh, turn your delay down a little. Dad worked hard, dad worked his ass off. It's just gonna basically add another layer uh, to your vocal track, thicken everything up. Dad worked hard, dad worked his ass off. So let's say I'm happy with my track as it is right now. I'm not, I could do a lot more to it. Uh, but I'm just gonna lie to myself and to all of you and uh, say that I have a finished uh, composition. So, to master, um, just using Acid, which I don't usually do, I use SoundForge, or you can get a mastering suite, PSP Vintage Warmer, um, T-Rex 24-bit, the list goes on, um, but you can, you can do this stuff in Acid, so what you want to do is go to the master f uh, volume controls and click on master effects, and, uh, Guess which plugin we're going to use. Once again, the Wave Hammer. Uh, so we click on Wave Hammer, add Wave Hammer, and there is this great preset called Master for 16 bit. We add that. Um, you probably don't want your threshold to be this harsh. To, I mean, it, I'll put it this way if, if the volume of your track is somewhere around negative 3 decibels, then you want your threshold to be somewhere around negative four decibels. If you want, if your uh, track is super loud and it's almost hitting zero, then you probably want it closer to negative two or negative one, because uh, that way you're not crushing the hell out of your track and making it sound <clears throat> distorted and uh, overwhelmingly loud. Uh, so now that I added that, you'll notice that uh, it will boost the master volume of the entire track to zero decibels. We set the output gain of the wave hammer to zero decibels, so that's what the resulting uh, volume of the track should be. By applying this effect to the master effects, uh, what I'm doing is is you know adding this limiter to the entire track, to every single track within my acid file, not just one, but everything. But somewhere I got mixed with some bad sauce Cause I started acting like a jack off I mean skipping class, shooting pool, getting high Getting food to me then wasn't worth a try When I shake a man's hand, look him in the eye Cause there's only one chance you can see inside That's basic mixing and mastering with Sony Acid um, Memory brought up a good point that generally what you'll do uh, when you're mastering is you'll uh, render your entire file as a wave and uh, once it's done rendering you'll bring that file into a program a wave editing program such as SoundForge because that way uh, once you're at the mastering stage you can add an equalizer to the entire um, you know if your bass if your bass is too loud you can EQ some of that bass out if you want to brighten it add an EQ to the overall uh, track um, and you can see your waveform, and that gives you a better idea of what needs to be done uh, in order to finalize the track. So that's one advantage to mastering outside of Acid. If you like the way uh, everything sounds here, cool. Um, I really glossed over a lot. I didn't get into bussing effects. I didn't get into... Um, I didn't explain panning that much. I didn't get into, uh, you know, all the other effects that Acid has to offer. And I only explored the effects that come free with uh, Sony Acid. So that's it. Um, hope you learned something. If you want to learn more, try Googling how to master or how to mix vocals or how to mix a beat. There are a lot of resources out there. Until the next video. Peace. 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 Peace.